Good morning. Welcome to our service today. I'm excited. The whole praise team's in the building today. Amen. And uh, so we're excited about that. Excited about having you join us today, either in person or by Facebook Live. Welcome. I hope that you're ready to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And allow the, the Holy Spirit to touch you during the course of this service, to minister to your heart, to lift us all up, to encourage us and strengthen us yes. in His presence. So we're going to open with a word of prayer as we go to the Lord together today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share together in worship and praise and adoration. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to minister to one another in your spirit and receive ministry that we so, so desperately need. And we ask, oh God, that you would just have your way, that the Holy Spirit would have liberty to move among us. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name and give you thanks for them. Amen. Amen. All right, let's worship the Lord together in this place.
fear and difficulties and things we have to experience and go through. This song really shares a great revelation of truth. Everybody is going to be happy over there. Amen. Everybody's going to be happy over there. Some of you had a difficult week. I had a kind of difficult week. And uh, sharing with some of you and some of the experiences that we've been going through. And this song came to my mind. I thought this is great, a great song for today. Everybody's going to be happy. Over yes. Amen. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond. Where the state of earth shall soon the glory share. Where the souls of men shall linger and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there.
I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you.
to turn your Bibles with me today to the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter 8, beginning verse 1 through verse 9. We're also going to be referencing the book of Hebrews chapter 2, beginning in verse 7 a little later on if you want to have that ready to go. I mean, you're still with me this morning, you're hanging in. No one's sleeping, slumbering. Not yet. Not yet. Amen. I not start preaching yet. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. Hopefully I won't put you to sleep. Never do. Psalm chapter 8. Beginning in verse number one. O oh Lord, our oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength. Because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. I'm going to ask you to repeat that verse with me as we say it together. It says, honor and tribute to him. Let's say it now. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, we come before you now in Jesus' name, and we just invite the anointing power of the Holy Spirit to rest upon us, Lord, to inspire us through your word. As your word comes forth, Lord, as the message is shared today, I just pray that you would anoint me, Lord, to share the truth that you would have us to receive today in this service and open every heart to receive in jesus name we pray amen amen greet somebody you haven't already say hey it's great to see you today oh, wait okay yeah that's really demonstrating a lot of energy today i'll tell you The message title today is How Excellent Is Your Name. And this psalm dovetails with or correlates with Hebrews chapter 2, where the writer of Hebrews is talking about Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of this song in behalf of humanity. And the writer of Hebrews there, if you have that, chapter 2, verse 7 through 9, referencing, quoting from Psalm 8. You have made him a little lower than the angels you have 
crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God might taste death for every one. Every psalm is not written by David, but this psalm was written by David. With all his flaws and failures, shortcomings. He's, he's a man in Scripture that should give us some hope that we can be imperfect and still please God because God said he's a man after my own heart. And he had this link with Jesus Christ in this sense that he prophesied in a number of passages concerning Jesus and in some cases even the words that Jesus would speak. And so there was this connection, spiritually, prophetically, between David and Jesus. And we see here that he, when he speaks of these things, he, he outlines what Jesus would fulfill in humanity. And so our message today is this. How excellent is your name? And he begins in verse 1, and, and we repeat it. And again, because it's repeated at the end of the chapter. And so that kind of gives us a clue there. This is the opening statement. It's also in the closing statement. So it all then, what's in between, kind of wraps this all up. Oh Lord, our Lord. Do you claim him today as your Lord? Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name. In all the earth. What a marvelous God we serve, right? What amazing things He has done. He's going to go on and share the amazing things He's done in regards to humanity. How excellent is your name in all the earth. It says, You have her who have set your glory above the heavens. The glory of God, the, the, that which bestows honor upon him, the glory of God, that which is surpassing, uh, that, that, that which is above, that which is pure and holy and righteous, that which brings glory. There's nothing that detracts from him, that lowers him, right? God is glorious. Amen. Some of you are glorious sometimes, other times not so much. Myself, I will include in that. Because we're humanity, right? So sometimes what we do is of the highest quality, doesn't have any imperfection. Well, there's some imperfection, but it does. You know, the negative doesn't take it away. But then we turn around and we do something negative. Isn't that frustrating to you and to me? You know, you do something that's that's praiseworthy or something that people can compliment you on and, and look to you, and, and then you turn around and do something Stupid, right? Something that's not excellent. Something that's not anything to be proud of. Because that's what it means to be a human being. But God, our Lord, is excellent in all that he does. His glory is above the heavens. Above the heavens. Above everything. His glory is in that realm which God dwells where there is perfection. And so he said, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Excellent. The same root word is excel. To excel in something is to be superior, to go beyond, to be above the normal, the average. How many of you like to excel? 
When you're going to school, you want to excel, right? You don't want to just be average or less than average. You want to be above average. You want to be superior. You want to excel. When people participate in sports. They want to excel. As I said, educational achievements. Hopefully, just being a good person, you want to excel at that, right? Or a good employee. Like Christina, got a promotion. That's right. She excels. So from the same root word, excellent, that which is excellent, that which is above, that which is superior, that which is beyond the routine. We can describe God that way. How excellent is your name? The very best quality, right? How excellent is your name in all the earth, everywhere, right? David writes in Psalm 95. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Here he says in chapter 8 on our text, verse 2, Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength. When Jesus in the New Testament quotes this particular verse, he says, You have ordained praise. Strength that comes from praise. How many of you God inhabits the praises of his people? That God is deserving of all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. What's he saying here? He doesn't use the word, but it's here. It's implied. We can insert the word even. Even out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants. Not just them, but even them. From the oldest to the youngest. God, you are praiseworthy. Even out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength to come from them through praise. The strength of praise. And that's another whole message in itself. When you're going through the valley, when you're going through the trial, when you're facing the enemy, as I was sharing with you last week, praise Him. Praise Him. There's strength in praise. How many know that? There's strength in praise. God dwells in praise. We meet with God in praise. His power is released in praise. Because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. You have overcome our enemies. You have overcome the avenger through the praise of people everywhere. From the oldest to the very youngest, even babes and nursing infants. Say, God, you're amazing. And everywhere, among all people, there's reason to praise you and to glorify you. Verse 3, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. I'm so overwhelmed by it. Do you ever do that? Look into the heavens and look at the stars. You know, most people are just too busy anymore to even notice that there are stars in the sky. We notice the sun because it shines in our eyes, right? And it's warm to us. It's been really warm lately. I am not going to complain, however, because the cold, 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 cold winter's coming. And then I'll complain. Okay. He says, when I look at all these marvelous things that you have made, when I look at the excellence of all of your creation, when I consider all your goodness, we're saying this morning, you were good, right? Some of you missed it. But we, we did sing it together. Amen. You are good. When I consider all these things, he says, what is man? Wow, there's a message there that we could really get into, which I won't in great detail this morning, but there's a, a message there because the mindset of humanity today is to be full of pride and lifted up with pride. 
Look who we are. Look what we have done. Wow, I am just so amazing. I am so... And people don't even encourage to be that way today. Especially on social media and things like that. Don't get me started. All right. None of you, of course. But you know what I'm talking about, right? People just have such a high opinion of themselves. I don't know how the world would ever survive without them, right? Pride is... I know, don't get me started. Let's send another message. Pride is... The order of the day, the mindset that we instill in those around us, that we're far too guilty of. But here the psalmist David has the right attitude and the right mindset and, and the spiritual mindset towards God. He says, what is man? When I, when I see all you've done, now mankind has achieved a lot of great things that are amazing technologically and medically and in all kinds of different fields that, that are just really amazing. But we have nothing compared to God. It's awesome. We have never done anything that even begins to compare to what God has done, the creator of all things. So he says, what is man that you are mindful of and that he's even on your mind, that you're even thinking about him? And the son of man that you visit him, not only man that you created, but all of his descendants. Why do you even think about us, God? Interesting here, and I'm sure David didn't realize it, but he used the phrase son of man. I know he's talking about the descendants of humanity. But one, one expression that describes Jesus Christ, he called himself, in fact, the son of man. We know that, son of God, son of man. He would fulfill this prophecy. What is man that you are mindful of, the son of man that you visit him. In the creation process, when God made Adam and Eve, for you have made him and her a little lower than the angels as far as the angels were in heaven and mankind was on the earth below over all of creation. How many know that when God created Adam and Eve, they were responsible. Adam named all the animals. And the angels are never declared to be superior, but they were in that heavenly realm with God. So in that sense, as we Adam and Eve were on the earth, you have made him a little lower than the angels. And I say when he made Adam and Eve, originally they were perfect in all things. They were perfect. They even radiated the glory of God. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. This was what man was designed to be. The greatest of all of God's creation. It was God in Genesis that made all things. That spoke and not only the planets and the stars and the earth itself. But all the things. You can read the Genesis account yourself. All of the creatures that are on the face of the earth, all those in the oceans, the fowl of the air, all the, all the things that were on the land surface. And finally, when all the rest of that was completed, he said, my crowning achievement is, is going to be to create man. And he's going to rule over all of this. The other things, he just spoke and they came into existence. But with man, God did something special. He shaped him and formed him from the clay or the dust of the ground. Which he didn't do with the other creation. 
This was going to be special. So that man could have communion and fellowship with God. And then what was so necessary, Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. He didn't breathe into the other creations, other creatures. God personally shaped him and formed him and then breathed his breath into him. And then when woman was made from him, then she also had that same life. So God made him a living. The other creatures were living, but living in a different way with the breath of God. Having the capacity to live forever. Yes. And have fellowship and communion with God. Because God had said, let us make man in our image. Back to our text, verse 6, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. Everything you have done. But the writer of Hebrews, and you have to look at these two together, when he references the psalm and says this actually is a revelation of humanity in relation to God, but then specifically of Jesus Christ and how he fulfills this psalm. So now back to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 8. You have put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. Why is that? Because of sin. Because Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. And they lost that dominion. So we don't see that. We don't, we don't see man in the position any longer that God had designed for him to be the crowning achievement of God's creation to rule over all the things on the earth that God had made without a time limit. To have communion and fellowship with God himself. To be a living being King James says, living soul. Mankind messed that all up. He says, so we, we do not see all things put under him. But then he adds this, and this is the fulfillment of, of Psalm 8. When in verse 9 he says, but we see Jesus. We don't see man in his rightful place that God had made him for, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels. What's he talking about? Jesus and his deity, of course, was not lower than the angels. He doesn't mean that. He's saying Jesus became one of us. Jesus lowered himself and descended from the glory and the splendor and the honor of heaven where the angels were and became one of us. One of the fallen, one of those who had lost position. Humanity, all of us were in the same boat. He became one of us. Made him a little lower than 
the angels came to the earth to be one of us. For what purpose? I'm still in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. For the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God might taste death for everyone. So that he can experience death for each and every one of us. So that he can elevate us again to be what God had designed us to be. Aren't you glad for Jesus Christ and what God has done through him? Philippians chapter 2 says that God has highly exalted him, right? He has lifted him up. He has lifted him up above all things. His name is above every name and every power and every authority. And he has lifted us up with him. will be what God intended for us to be. How many know there are going to be new heavens and a new earth? How many know before everything is wrapped up, we're going to rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ for a thousand years? And then after that, for all eternity, we're going to be with the Lord and rule and reign with Him and be what God intended for us to be, to live forever, to be perfect in His sight, to have communion with God. To be the crowning achievement of his creation. Therefore, we can proclaim, we're back to our text in Psalm chapter 8, after he reveals all of this, and shares what God has done in his awesomeness. Verse 9, he said, O oh Lord, our oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name in all the earth. What a marvelous thing God has done through Jesus Christ. We can rejoice this morning, amen? We can proclaim, God, you are so awesome and so amazing. And I can't begin to comprehend how great you are when I look into the heavens and see all that you made, the stars and the moon and the Sun that beats down, and the heavenly planets and bodies, and then I look all around in the earth around me and see all that you have made. And then when I see humanity uh, that you made uh, originally to, to be the crowning achievement uh, and glory of your creation uh, that had fallen into sin, and I recognize that Jesus Christ came to save us from our sins, and now we are able to live forever and be uh, elevated again to that place that God intended for us to be. I can proclaim how excellent is your name in all the earth. You are amazing. Huh? I want us to proclaim it. Amen. I'm going to ask Bill to come play for us. We're just going to do the chorus. I know we did it last week, but let's sing together. If you'll stand, how great. Is our God. How many can agree with me this morning? God is so awesome. Amen. So great. Amen. As he's coming, I just want you to pray with me. Lord, thank you for your awesomeness. Thank you for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for you have done amazing things. For you have done excellent things. There's none like you. Is 
Oh, 
like to join us today? We're going to pray for Bob and Sandy. We're going to be talking to the oncologist tomorrow. Where to go from here. And, uh, you know, God, God is in control of everything. And we just believe that. Amen. So Sandy, you're not here today, so we're going to anoint a prayer cloth and uh, send it with Bob, if you don't mind. So everybody, we're going to join in and just pray. You know, God is in control. Now, I just know, and I know that you know, that God has Sandy in his hands. And he's the God of miracles, power. And he's the one that can bring healing and deliverance and help and encouragement and strength in time of need and comfort for Sandy and Bob like no one else can do. And we're just going to agree together. Yes. But right now, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. But your power is awesome and limitless. Lord, we anoint this prayer cloth for Sandy, Lord, as a, as a symbol, Lord, and a, and a focus of, of our prayer. We ask, oh God, that it might be used that way, Lord, as a symbol of our agreement together, Lord, for your power to be revealed and manifested, Lord, for Sandy, for Bob. We know, Lord, that you have so much more power than the doctors. They do what they can, Lord, but you are the great physician and healer and deliverer and supplier of our needs. So we pray, oh God, for that healing that comes from you. We pray, oh God, for that strength that comes from you. We pray, oh God, for that encouragement that comes from you. We pray, oh God, for that peace that comes from you that's beyond all understanding. In the mighty, awesome name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glad Sharon's doing better this morning. Let's just agree with her right now. Lord, we just pray for Sharon that you would continue in that healing process. And Lord, she recovers from her back surgery. Lord, I just pray that you have that complete wholeness and wellness in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for Apple today, Lord, to go into a physical situation, Lord, in her body. But Lord, you're her healer, her deliverer, and the supply of her need right now. In the name of Jesus, we agree, oh God manifestation of your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. We're going to pray for you too before we get to that. But right now we're just, hallelujah. Lord, I, I agree, Lord, with Donna right now. We all agree. Lord, you're going to touch her, Lord, and bring healing, Lord, into her body right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Receive healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Okay. Okay. So we have two requests. Let's pray for Carl and Wilma. Carl was shaky today. They're watching from home. Hey, guys. We're waving to you. We know you're in there with us. You're praying with us. You're agreeing. We're going to pray right now. Lord, we just pray for Carl that you touch him in body, Lord. Do a miracle, Lord, we pray. Give him that strength and steadiness he needs. Lord, we pray and we agree, Lord, for, for Wilma today. Lord, we continue to touch her in body, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for Tammy, sister Patrice. Oh, God, that you would bring healing to her. Lord, and deliverance in the awesome name of Jesus. Lord, we just pray, Lord, for Al Swanson's family that you would touch them in a special day, a special way today. Lord, you said you give them strength and comfort. These things, Lord, we agree and we praise you.
Okay. There's so much pain he can't understand. It. Okay. And, uh, they, anyway, he asked me to pray for him. And he's trying to live with the Lord. And uh, just pray for him. Absolutely. Praise God. Absolutely. Yes. Pray for your grandson. We say, God, just touch him in a special way. Bring right? healing to him. Let's pray for Jim this morning, Lord. I just pray for Jim. You touch him in his body. Lord, you are able to heal and deliver like no other. In the awesome name of Jesus, do a mighty work, we pray. Amen. 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 Absolutely. We're going to pray for Linda Brock's brother. He's now in a nursing home. God, we just pray for him. Linda's brother, you just touch him in a special way, Lord. You bring healing to his body. In the awesome name of Jesus Christ, who's above every name. Amen. 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 I don't want to embarrass you, but I want to pray for you. You're going through some transitional times in your life. And, oh, you know, God is working with you. I know he is. God is working in your life.
Nobody snap, man. I can't see you at home, but I don't know about that. But the rest of us are not. So, amen. God is good. I thank you for being here today and sharing in this service. How many feel like you've been blessed of the Lord? Amen. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. How many feel like you've been blessed of the Lord? Amen. Amen. All right. That's better. All right. See, at home, they were doing a lot better. Yeah, I, I, I can tell. They were just really, and they were wondering what was wrong with us. You know, we've got to do better. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. You know, I want to testify. This is not like a big deal. If it's somebody else, but you know, if it's you, it's a big deal, right? So a few weeks ago, it's probably been uh, five weeks ago or six weeks ago. Now I, well, actually it was, when was that? Was that over Memorial Day weekend, I think, or no, before that? Uh... Anyway, for whatever reason, last time I was down visiting with my my kids in uh, Greenwood, my daughter-in-law Tammy noticed that on the back of my left earlobe was something that didn't look right. It was a little growth kind of thing, and she said, "Doesn't look right." And a little black spot in the middle of it, and she said, "You need to get that checked out by a dermatologist to see what it is." It was, you know, it was no, it was, I don't know, it wasn't gigantic. Felt again, but it, after I noticed, I didn't notice it. Then she mentioned it. And I started rubbing on it things, you know, and then it got to be sore. So I, I did go to a dermatologist, and she said it's a cyst. And I reported back to you, and she said, "Don't worry about it. We're not going to do surgery right now because just no, you know, we'll just wait and see what, you know, it's not cancer or anything." And so I thought, okay, but I thought maybe I'd get a second opinion. I don't want that on the back of my ear because you know. Well, I noticed about uh, a week and a half ago that it was gone. That it had just, that it had some kind of probably pus or fluid. I, I don't get grossed out. It probably had released, and there was just a little telltale, a little bit where the skin was right there, you know, on the base of it. That's all that's left. It's like, wow, praise God. No surgery necessary, and I don't just have to live with it. It's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I give God the glory for that. I wanted to share that with you. Amen. God still does miracles, doesn't he? Yes. Amen. And he deserves all the glory and the honor and the praise. Glory. All right. We're going to let you go so you can do whatever else you have planned for today. But God is, is so awesome and so good. And, uh, you know, it's been wonderful to be in his presence great to be with the entire praise team together again for one Sunday, and then it starts to change. <laughs> it has been really great. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I appreciate all of you. Love you guys. I love my friend and associate, Bill Kentz. I'm going to put him on the spot and ask him to pray and ask God to go with us. Appreciate it. What's that? Put me on the spot again after we kind of play Upgrades Our God. Absolutely. <laughs> My brain just kind of froze. Father, God, it's truly been a blessing to be in your house today, Lord. We thank you, God, for the many things you've done in our lives, Lord. We thank you, God, that we can lean upon you when we have problems in our lives. We thank you, God, that you're always there for us, even in the midnight hour. Pray that God you reach out your hand and touch each and every person, Lord, as we go our separate ways. Bring us back together to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey.